Hello and welcome to Intermediate Scratch Lesson 1. My name is Ryan and today I'm going to go over a few new blocks that you may or may not be familiar with yet. But first, before we get started, I'd like to cover some of the key points that we should already be familiar with at this point and if we're ready to proceed with this lesson. So the first concept we should already know is which block executes code. So for example, what, what we've been working with so far, all programs usually begin with a when green flag clicked button, which can be accessed here. Of course, we have no code, so nothing has run. And we've covered motion for certain sprites, meaning that we're able to program our sprite to move left and right. In order to make that happen, we've been using the control blocks or the event blocks. There's multiple ways to do this. But one way, for example, is to use the when key space pressed and change it to any key of your liking, such as a left arrow or right arrow. And then use the appropriate motion block, such as move 10 steps to move on the right side of the x-axis, or move negative 10 steps to move on the left side of the x-axis. Now with our left and right arrow keys, we're able to move this sprite. Now for this lesson, we're actually not going to use the move left and move right arrow keys to move our sprites, but we're going to explore a new form of movement that you may or may not be familiar with. This is the point towards mouse pointer key. Now, this can vary based on whether you have an actual physical computer mouse, whether you are using a trackpad for your computer, or if you have a touchscreen device like a touchscreen Chromebook or a, an iPad. But the goal for this code is to have our sprite here, in this case it's a cat, move towards our mouse pointer, which you can see here, at a smooth and consistent rate, and eventually reach our mouse pointer, and then move no further. So, like most of our code, we are starting with a when green flag clicked block. And let's see what happens when we use the point towards mouse pointer. Right. So what I told my computer was when green flag is clicked, point towards the mouse pointer. And that's exactly what it did. Now, I wanted to stay pointing towards my mouse pointer throughout my code. Now, there's a key block that I'm sure you've used in the past known as the forever block. Now, for this point in the video, I'm going to go ahead and grab a new sprite. So let's go ahead and delete this cat and pull up a dragonfly sprite. Let's first that dragonfly. Here we are. And we had our when green flag clicked block. And we had our point towards a mouse pointer block. But the difference I want to have this time is I'm going to go ahead and encase this point towards a mouse pointer block in a forever block. So what this means is instead of telling my computer that when this green flag is clicked, to point towards my mouse pointer, I want to say that when the green flag is clicked, continuously and forever, point towards this mouse pointer until this program is stopped. So now when I click the green flag, the dragonfly will continue to point in the direction that my mouse pointer lies. Now this dragonfly is a little bit too large for the size of this screen. So I'm going to set a new block under looks known as set size to percentage. I'm going to place it right after my when green flag click block. And let's go ahead and see what happens when we change that to, let's say, 25, or 1 fourth of its original size. I press the green flag. This might be a little bit too small. Let's go ahead and up it to, how about 40? Perfect. However, there's something that I realize. As I move my mouse pointer, it doesn't look like my dragonfly is pointing towards my mouse pointer, but rather its right wings are pointing towards my mouse pointer. Luckily, there's an easy remedy to this. I'm going to stop this code here and head to Costumes. So while making sure that I have my dragonfly selected, I've went ahead and moved to the Costume screen. Now it seemed like it was following from the right side of the dragonfly towards my mouse pointer, which means I'd like the head of the dragonfly to point towards the right, meaning that I'm going to rotate this dragonfly 90 degrees to the right. If I were to highlight this here, I have the option to rotate. I'm going to go ahead and hold the Shift key to make my rotation more precise. And there we go. Now, let's head back to our code and see how it follows our mouse pointer now. Perfect. But there's one thing that we're missing. 
this dragonfly is remaining stationary rather than following my mouse pointer. But I'm sure you're familiar with this block. We're actually just going to use the move steps block and keep it within our forever block because we want the dragonfly to be moving forever and heading towards our mouse pointer. Let's go ahead and put a rate of five steps and see how that looks. Perfect. So we've gone and created the illusion that the dragonfly is chasing our mouse pointer. Let's go ahead and add some more key functionalities to this game to make it more playable. One of the great things about Scratch is its library of sounds. I'd like to make it so that while my dragonfly is chasing my mouse pointer, it has the fluttering sound that a dragonfly would make. This is going to help my code feel more alive and my game more fun. In order to find a sound for the dragonfly, I'm going to head over to this sounds tab here. And here I have the default pop sound, but that's not a sound that a dragonfly would make. So I'm going to head to the bottom left, go to choose a sound, and use a search function. Here we have an entire library of sounds for our use. And if we hover over a few of them, we can see what they sound like. Bell toll, bird. Let's explore something down here. How about the bass? How about crank? This could work. Now I have this crank sound here. But the sound of the fluttering is a little bit too slow for me, and it goes on a little bit too long. So what I can actually do is click and drag just to select a quick portion of the sound I want to use. That's better. And I'm able to speed it up as well. That sounds better. So I have with my new selected section, I can use the function copy to new. And I have my new sound down here. Let's go ahead and rename the sound flying sound. And when I head back to my code, I like to make it so that when the green flag is clicked, the flying sound will forever play until my code is stopped. So we're going to head to events. When green flag clicked, we're going to go ahead and grab a forever block and head to a new tab called Sound. Here I have a couple sounds that can play. I have Start Sound, Play Sound Until Done, and Stop All Sounds. What I'd like to do is use the Play Sound Until Done and encompass it in this forever block. Now when we hit the green flag, let's take a look at our result. Perfect. That concludes this video. In the next video, we're going to add some new pieces to our game, such as adding flies to the game, creating a score system, and having the flies disappear when the dragonfly connects with them and or eats them.